what do we rip off? I think the ideal thing to do now is um, take apart, take apart, you know, the main, or let down, let's let down the, 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 the power in, in the mainspring. Because like I did on that other Chinese movement, because I didn't realize how it went together. Um, like I said, most of the videos I've watched, you, you take off the automatic, this is not automatic obviously, but the automatic winding movement, then you can, then you get down to these sort of gears and then you let down the, the power. And I thought the same thing for that other movement as I opened, as I pulled off that, that I didn't realize it was all integrated in one, in one um, uh, bridge and bits went flying through the air. Uh, I think I found all the bits, but it wasn't a good experience, and I don't want to experience that again. So let's, and there should be no power in this because it's been, like I said, it's been sitting around for so long. However, on the other side, it, it was still, you know, the balance was still still moving. So that was a little bit bizarre. Um, now, even though that it has been sitting around for so long, or if you know that it's been sitting around for so long, and you're, you're, you, you know, you think you're absolutely sure that there's no power in it, I still recommend, you know, just spending that 10 seconds and making sure there's no power in it because there's a number of reasons why there could still be some residual power left in the mainspring um you know like i said i'm not a watchmaker but just you know the way my brain ticks and there could be a lot of reasons one reason might be um that the balance staff one of the pivots on the balance staff might be broken. Let's say the, the, the let's say you know the, the balance the, the pivot on the bottom, which is this one. This is the bottom because it's obviously the movement is inverted, right? There's, um if if that bottom pivot is broken and you store the watch dial up, it's not going to work. So you know it's not going to wind down. Um. So that 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 will obviously uh, you know. You have power in the mainspring, and um, so there could be a broken balance staff, um, or balance staff pinion. There could be a broken jewel, and one of these cap jewels might be damaged or broken, and there could be a broken or damaged um jewel in in the train gear, and um, that will you know maybe cause or or a broken pivot in one of the um train wheels, and um, that may cause it to you know stop working and not wind down. Um, another reason might be just it might be that old or misserviced that the oil might dry up in you know in these and, and if the oil gums up and dries up that's going to cause the watch to stop if you've got too much oil maybe that might do the same thing I'm not sure um, another reason is and I've heard this and I don't get this I've heard this that people some people like and this is this let me just go back. This watch has got a hacking movement or a stopping lever. So what that means is when um, you pull the crown out uh, to set the time, the um, balance stops. And um, that's a good feature if you want to synchronize your watch to be exactly, you know, whatever. It's like actually it's quite an ingenious yet crude mechanism. All it is, and I'll, when I put it apart, you'll see it. It's under here. It's actually, it's like an L-shaped lever. It's all it is is like an L-shaped lever like that, right? L-shaped lever, yeah. Then zoom out. It's an L-shaped lever like that, and it sits in that bit there. Rides in the um, in the um, clutch. The clutch has got a groove in it. It rides in the clutch, and this this here it, it has a pivot. It pivots like that, right? And it pivots on on a, on a little post. And what happens is when you pull the the crown out, the stem out, it um, pushes the um, clutch forward when it pushes the clutch forward it um or the it 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 goes uh, which way does it go i'm gonna lie now ah, it goes it goes it, put, it pushes the clutch forward so it goes it goes like that right that so pivots there and it goes like that and when that this bit this thing here my drawings are awesome drawings right um i have my graphics department work on this so as as you as you, as you do that that's, that's the balance so the balance is you just break the watch. The balance is going like this, spinning, and when you do it, it just touch. It just touches the balance, and that stops the movement. It's 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 it's, it's as simple as that. Yet effective. Um, problem with that is that of course you know some people like storing their watches, you know, hacked. I don't know why you would you would store it hacked. I I don't see the logic in it. What the problem I do see with storing it hacked is that you're storing a watch. 
with all this power, this potential energy in, in, in the mainspring. Like, you know, like, I mean, things like in nature, like going from, you know, you know, you know, high potential to low potential, you know, you know, water always finds its natural course. Electricity, electricity flows from the, you know, to the area of least resistance. I mean, things like, oh, see, it's still moving. Oops, I stopped it. Um, so why would you have it stored with all this power in it? It just seems like you've got all this tension. You've got all this tension in that mainspring, unnecessary. I don't, I don't get why you would do that. And as when it is hacked as well, because I said with that, that lever action, and it's touching on the balance there. I mean, do you want something touching the balance? I mean, the balance is the most delicate piece of this whole watch. Look at this. I can't believe really it's still... I'm, I'm freaking out here, aren't I? It's still ticking, and it's been sitting... So again, so there's still some sort of residual power in there. Um, the other reason I like, like, I don't like the idea of, of putting the watches away hacked is when to hack the movement, um, you need to pull the stem out, right? So when you pull the stem out, this is a waterproof case, that's a screw down. But even if it wasn't a waterproof case, you pull the stem out, it, 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 it will allow the ingress of, of, of crap. Like you'll get some dust in there or you'll get something will, will get in there. And if, if, that, if nothing gets in there, moisture in the air will... will Definitely, especially if you live in a, in a climate that's, you know, you know, live in like far north Queensland where it's very humid or other places around the world where it's very humid, you know, you're going to get, you know, you're going to get, um, you know, humidity into the movement and moisture and moisture and watch movement, not a good combination, not a good combination at all. So I don't get why anybody would store their watch hacked. It just doesn't make any sense to me. There's just no positives. There's, there's, there's too much power left in, in, in there unnecessarily, which, you know, because obviously as, as the, as the um, mainspring is fully wound, it's, 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 everything's tight and everything's pushing and, and everything is, is, is tight. So the only reason it releases the tightness, what, what releases the tightness in, in a watch is the escape and the balance in the escape. And that allows the watch to tick, right, like this. You've got all this pressure. It's just, it's just unnecessary. It's, um, I don't get it, but people do it. I don't recommend it. And so you, two things, you've got all this energy there that's unnecessary and you're pulling out the, the crown, the stem, stuff will get in, especially humidity. And that's, humidity is not a watcher's friend. Anyway, that was probably 10 minutes of me dribbling on and that's what you'll probably get with me. If you don't like it, well, sorry. Um, so what we do, the way the way we let down the, um, the main spring here, and that's why another reason I like leaving the crown in, is you grab the crown, you've got the click here, and as you go to wind the watch, when you wind it, as you, you can't see it, but as you, as you wind it, the click via the click spring, you know, disengages and allows the watch to wind. So when you, when you get that little bit of a lift, you just jam your screwdriver or your pegwood. And I'll get my pegwood so I can pretend I know what I'm doing. You get your pegwood behind it and then you just let, depending on how much tension there is in the mainspring, you just let the, um, the crown just run through run through your fingers until you, you have no power. So let's um, get my goggles on and do that. So see, so it just lifts up a little bit. You get underneath it and you, uh, you let it go. Now that had a little bit too much. Oh, maybe, oh, maybe I, I think I wound this before because I wanted to, when I was doing one of my other previous videos, I think I wound it up on purpose because I thought there shouldn't have any power in that. See, again, you just don't know, just let it down, just to be on the safe side. Because the last thing you want, if you pull this apart, like I did that other Chinese movement, I can't believe that Chinese movement is still working. When I pulled it apart, bits went flying through the air. Mate, there, there appeared, now whether it was just dirty, but there appeared to be bits of jewel, you know, everywhere. It, you know, jewel fragments, I reckon it might have just shattered jewel, but it still works. Um, so you don't want to do that. You don't want to chew up teeth, because these teeth are very fine. You don't want to crack a jewel. Um, so anyway... So just release that, and then I let it run through my fingers. And then what I do is, while I've got it released, I just I just move the crown un, in the unwound way, just a little bit, just to make sure there's nothing there. But that's that's there's no power in that whatsoever. So I am nice and comfortable, and um, that that's good to go. Grab a screwdriver that'll fit, and then I will now in here. What do you do next? Do you start ripping off? Um, the train, the train bridge, train gear bridge, or do you rip off um, um, the mainspring barrel bridge? I don't think there's anything um, 
I don't think it really matters which way you go. Um, you know what? I'm going to rip off. I'm going to rip off, I think. No, I won't. Because I've just noticed here that if I take off this bridge here, then that center wheel, which is the fourth wheel, uh, or seconds wheel, um, that's going to, um, that's that's sitting under the um, the ratchet wheel. This is the ratchet wheel, right? It's sitting under there and it's going to give me, I don't want to bend anything. So let's just, and like I said, I haven't pulled this one apart for a while. So let's just. Get in there, take that out. Now, if you've watched plenty of videos like me, and get my brass tweezers, if you've watched plenty of videos like me, um, this ratchet wheel screw is a normal right hand thread where the crown, this is the, this is the ratchet wheel, this is the crown wheel. The crown wheel screw is normally, I don't know if it's all the time, I'm not going to say it's every single time, but it's normally a left-hand thread, so it's the opposite, because obviously when you're winding the watch, the way you're winding the watch will loosen that screw, that's why it's a left-hand thread, so as you're winding it, it's actually tightening it. So the only time I've seen on a video that the screw, the screw on the, um, on, on is this, this screw is a right-hand thread, when there's three screws, some of the really nice movements, Real special when they got they got the like a little cover plate which got three screws on there, and that's pretty. That's that looks pretty special. Uh, and then it, because there's three screws on there, you know, like in a triangle formation, you know, you can have them being a normal right hand thread. It's not going to make a difference. And there's a single screw though. Generally, generally there's markings on them as well to signify that they're left hand. They've normally got three lines in them. This one doesn't, but this is a left hand thread. I can assure you. Um. So just be careful because if you try to unscrew it by going left, you will snap it. I haven't had the the pleasure or the displeasure in snapping it. Well, I have I have never done it, and I well, you know, I'll never say never because you know stuff happens. So and another thing is in the book when you read the book. So I, I read the book every now and again. Um, these screws are different. You will notice that you know, if you've got them in the in the container, the the way you will notice that the the ratchet wheel screw and the crown wheel screw are different apart from being threads because you can't tell the threads by looking at them right if you unless you've got really good eyes is that the crown screw and i'll just take it out i'll put this off because i know my like i'll flick it and it'll end up on the ground in the black hole the book calls it the bermuda triangle i'll call it the black hole oops see gotta go gotta go right to undo it see i started going left just out of instinct i just i just finished talking about it three seconds ago right now on a and I thought, oh, hang on, so I'm going to say, so, right, this is, apart from it being left hand, it's a, it's, a, it's a lot shorter thread. So I can put them in together because, well, first, if you try to screw it in, it won't screw it in because the thread's different. Anyway, so that will just lift off. This is the crown wheel. And then we take off the ratchet wheel, which just comes off. And I always just like, just, I don't know what it is. I just, watching so many videos, just as you take these off, take them off ever so slightly or slowly and just check underneath because things sometimes stick to them. And I'll tell you why. When I took off that crown wheel, right, that was fine. I took off that crown wheel, it was fine. But the first time I took off this crown wheel, and I didn't turn it over to have it, I just chucked it in the compartment. And I noticed something floating in the in the compartment here. And what it was, was, and I don't know if this is consistent with all of them, but in this particular movement, there's this, see this here? There's a little shim, a bushing, a little shim or a bushing. And that sits on there just to, I don't know, it's probably there to be like a sacrificial part, I suppose, like a bearing, I suppose. And it just... And that there, if that's stuck on the bottom there and you chuck it in the cleaner or you do something, it goes missing. You can have all sorts of grief. So just be careful when you're taking off bridges and stuff like that. Unless you absolutely know what you're doing, but I don't. Um, just be really careful you don't lose that. It's really so small. It's only about maybe a, a millimeter and a bit in diameter. Take that off. Be careful with that. So that's off. Then here is you've got your click and your click spring. Now, again, be very careful. This click spring, that goes flying, you're not going to find it. Um, there's not too much tension in it, and it just it just sits in there. So there's a little click spring, ever so small. 
put that in there as well and then the clip comes out which that just that just sits in a little has a little post here just sits in a little hole put that away as well so that's done all that that's taken off all the um um those two wheels the the crown one the ratchet wheel and now we can attack um this um the squeaking you hear the squeaking you hear this is a, you hear that squeaking because my setup is very sophisticated in the laundry this is the um the towel rail i'm leaving my hand against it because i'm all cramped up here anyway enough digressions so now we'll we'll attack this i'll just have a bit of a look if i'm in for yeah, in screen good um how long we've how long we've gone for 45 minutes but i should have had this part i should have had this thing apart and together by now but anyway um i hope you're learning something um so now we'll take off the the train the train bridge um what i sometimes would like to do is probably at this stage take off the balance because it's the most delicate part and you know i just don't want to break it i don't want to stuff it up so shall i do that now i will do that now so that screwdriver probably don't need any more which one should i use i reckon the red one that's pretty that's sorry about fluffing around here no, I won't use the red one, it's a bit too big. I'll use the, the black one. So like I said before, you don't need to have a full set of really expensive screwdrivers. All you need is three or four, you know, I've only probably used about three different screwdrivers. Um, now I'll just take the balance off. The balance is held, the balance assembly, shall I say the balance cock. The, the whole assembly is held on by one screw. Um, very delicate piece. This, this, the balance assembly and the um pallet are the most delicate things on these watches you just want to take your time with them you don't want to for you don't want to force anything with watches ever but it, you especially don't want to force anything with this because you know it's not going to end well for you i'll, I'll tell you that right now give you the hot tip right so we just um go in there undo that screw now like i was saying before see how I'll see if i can get you better better in there see how that's the screw i've just done it see, see how it sits in there it's sunk right in there gee whiz i'm hopeless yeah see how it's really in there like let me get my pointer see how it's it's sunk in there now you can probably get your number five tweezers and pull it out Although the, the problem I find with those really, really fine tweezers is that the fact that they are so fine, if you grab something with it and it pings out, you're never going to find it. It's going to end up lost. So what I tend to do is a little bit of rotico on a, on a bit of pegwood and you just poke it in there and away it comes out. Easy as that. Then I've got a little special... Just put that aside. Then I've got a little, little piece of rotico that I just keep that screw in because you know i just put it in that little thing and i'll put the balance in a separate compartment like i said i don't like using that balance tack it just gives me the heebie-jeebies um so i'll put that in there but at first so i've got the screw and that little bit of rotico so it doesn't go walkabouts and then what you do is and this should all come apart pretty simple because i've had it apart recently but you just just with the screwdriver, just get under it, you know, with a post zone, just, you know, just, just, just pry a little bit. Try to get it up straight because the pivots on these balance stuff are very fine. You, I mean, I've never broken one, but I'm sure they, they break. People say they break it really easily, so I'll, I'll listen to them. So you take that off. Now if you want to grab the whole, grab it under the wheel, just so the, the hairspin doesn't go flying everywhere, grab it straight up, a little bit out. There you go. Easy as that. Easy as that. Not a problem. So I like storing them upside down as well. That way the, the pivot on that is not um, going to get damaged. So we will put that in a separate little container. With, yeah, with that piece of rotico with the uh, screw on it. Close her up. Put it aside somewhere and forever hold your peace right now that's that's got me less nervous now the other 
bit now that you know is very delicate as well is in here and I'll try to get you up focused a little bit more is this thing here this thing here is the palette the palette bridge and the palette underneath it now a lot of people say you know the the escape not this yeah the the balance the balance is the heart of the watch and the heartbeat of the watch and all that and I agree I agree it's the heart but I think I think this whole balance and escape not only is it the heart of the watch but it's the brains of the watch as well because the heart doesn't do much but pump stuff around your body right but it needs something to, to drive it. it needs a brain so i think this is the brain as well because this that controls the balance also controls through the top on the regulator it regulates it so it adjusts it so it, not only does it beat it, it adjusts how how it beats and how quick and how slow it beats so i think it's the it's the brains and the heart of the watch very delicate this is very delicate as well um, so I think I'll take that off as well just to be on the safe side because I can get I've got access to it, so why not? It doesn't hurt to have a bit of a bit of a look around when you're in here. Have a bit of a look around and get your little jollies. Be careful you don't slip like I just did then and uh, break anything. Take that little screw out. Again, that that there into a little compartment on its own. Again, be very careful taking this bridge off, the pallet bridge. Lift it straight up because the the pallet jewel, um, not the pallet jewel, the pallet pivot, the pivot on this pallet is really, really delicate. You will, mate, you'll be in all sorts of strife if you bust that. So just get under it, just pry it a little, just straight up. Just, it sh you shouldn't really need much. There you go just gives way once it just gives way and you might want to double up with the tweezers and the and the thing just to make sure you just lift it straight up let's check underneath put it in the little compartment again i'm going to go over this again just keep your compartments organized you know all this is all my was all the motion works and stuff all this is the the winding you know the, the crown wheel and ratchet wheel on that and in here i've got all the pallet stuff so that was pallet bridge there and I'll take the pallet off again. Be very, very careful on taking that off. Just be very careful that you're not gonna foul anything up because the escape wheel is still in there. A little bit of rotico inspector, just a little bit of rotico because the gears on that escape wheel, you know, I don't want it to grip or anything. About it. Chuck that in there very gently. That's all that's all happened. So that leaves now taking off this main bridge and then um, this winding mechanism there. So, away we go, we're moving on. So there's three, no, three, there's only two screws that hold um, hold the main bridge on, main gear train bridge on. And you know, I've seen other people that undo all the screws first and then I'm, I get nervous because my luck is I'll undo all the screws, I'll knock it and the screw will go flying into the black hole and I'm done. All right, see how these screws are deep? Now you can use your number five, if you've got the number five really pointy ones, and I'll show you how to do that, and then you can get in and rip it out. You know? But, the other way I like to do it, most way, most times I like to do it, is I like to, um, I like to use the rod, okay? Because that's just me. All right, so I got that off. Double check. There's no other screws in there. No, the um, so, yeah. Sometimes I think this has got three screws in it, but it hasn't. This one here, there's only got two screws in there and three screws in this plate. And again, you grab your grab your twe grab your tweezers. The tweezers, <laughs> tweezers. These are tweezers, right? And grab your screwdriver and just get underneath and just pry it up. Just there you go. Just it just it'll just pop up. It'll just Unless it's really gummed up, it's really old movement, it's really gummed up, it'll, it'll probably give you a little bit of grief. But generally speaking, it'll come up pretty straightforward. Have a look, turn it over. Nothing really exciting in there. Okay, um, you know what I might do? I might just take that. I might just put that, I might just put the, the bridge in the centre there. Because it's a big bridge and I don't want it knocking around when I take these wheels out, I want it knocking around in there. So then, okay, then we're free to go. 
see the beautiful so it's a really nice movement i mean it's not it's nicely finished like when you look at it the the plate is actually it's like a sandblasted finish it's actually really nice it's not like a really cheap and nasty movement um so there you go there's the bibs and bobs in there so we take off this uh fourth wheel don't want to touch the um don't want to touch the um the end of the uh, teeth there pull it straight out that's the fourth wheel i reckon it is then you um take off the third wheel that comes off as well third wheel and then the uh this name escapes me haha <laughs> that's the escapement wheel there you go you're gonna have to put up with my humor it's escape wheel goes off as well and then this wheel here this wheel here, let me just get up. This wheel here. Where is it? Gee, the glare. This wheel here, this brass wheel here, is, you can see where it is, right? That's called the, the center wheel. It's a center wheel, right? But it's not the center wheel. Center wheel's not in the center. Um, I think the thing is the, the center second wheel I think it's the second wheel but the center they actually I think I call it in the book they call it the center wheel because in this particular movement it's not in the center but it's it's it, it's actually under the um it's under the mainspring barrel anyway you can't take that out until well, I don't know if you can but I don't really want to risk it take it out no I don't want to risk it uh you, t you have to take this this bridge off this mainspring bridge before you crack that open so that's those wheels there now what I tend to do then is I will I'll close that up now 